All right, welcome back to the seventh lesson in the 30-hour post-licensing course. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about financing in this section. Financing is a key part of the transaction. While we have very little to do with it, it is still incumbent upon us to make sure our client understands and oftentimes they do ask us a lot of questions. So you must understand the basic concept of financing. You must understand some of the requirements, especially of some of the more common uh, financing techniques, which we will discuss. You may even guide them in a direction towards a mortgage lender or mortgage broker or a bank to get the financing. So it's very important that you understand this section, even though technically it is not in our purview and you are not licensed. So one of the things that's key about this, just like real estate has to have a license, a mortgage broker or a mortgage originator or a mortgage lender all have license as well. It is illegal for people to talk about real estate if they are not licensed. It's against the administrative rules. Same thing with you. You should not be getting in depth and talking about and quoting interest rates because that is required a license in the mortgage industry. You know, you can probably tell them, hey, they're in the mid threes or in their four and a half, in the fours, between three and a half and four and a half. But you should never say, hey, go call this person and you'll get a 3.25 interest rate. That's quoting a, an interest rate and that requires a license by definition. So let's talk about the beginning and several of the people. <clears throat> there are two markets that mortgages originate from. All right. By definition, the first one is called the primary market or the primary mortgage market. The primary mortgage market includes people like mortgage bankers, mortgage brokers, commercial banks, credit unions, savings and loan situations or uh, associations, and insurance companies. So the question that I ask you is what do all of these people have in common? Go ahead and think of it for a minute, hit pause and start this back up and see if you can tell me what all of these people have in common. I will tell you now that you are back, what all these people have in common is that. All right, they all have money in common. All of these people get paid every day. Unions, credit unions get deposits. People pay their union dues. People pay their insurance premiums. All of this, these people actually have so much money that they don't know what to do with it. All right. One of the things they do with it is they give it to the bank. So let's talk about something else on a side note that we all understand that banks traditionally don't have money. All right. I know it breaks your heart. And while we're at it, I'll go ahead and tell you there's no Easter bunny. Okay. Banks don't have money. Banks are educated people in the ways of assessing risk and they can determine who should get money, but banks don't have money. Who has the money? These guys have the money. All right. Now there was a really cool television series in the sixties, seventies, eighties. I can't remember. That was called the Beverly Hillbillies. If you are too young to remember the Beverly Hillbillies, go Google it. But quickly, let me tell you, it was about a, at the time they used the term hillbilly, a uh, guy from the country backwoods named Jed Clampett, who was out hunting and found out that there was a massive reserve of oil on his land. And he all of a sudden became a billionaire and due to this oil. So he was convinced to move to Hollywood or Beverly Hills in a big mansion, but yet he still continued to live in his finger quotes hillbilly method. 
And there was another character named Mr. Drysdale, who was the president of the bank, in which Jed Clampett kept all of his money in the bank. And in every episode, there is some play on the fact that Mr. Drysdale was always kissing Jed Clampett's butt. And the reason for that was because banks don't have money. Their investors have money, all right? It was Jed Clampett's money that the bank was loaning out. Jed Clampett in that scenario would be an example of a primary mortgage market. These people have so much money they don't know what to do with. There's a really cool scene in a movie called Blow with Johnny Depp. It was kind of factual, kind of fictional about a uh, cartel member who was obviously dealing in illegal drugs. In the one scene, he comes into his house and he's got this pack of money wadded up or bound together in a styrofoam or in, uh, uh, what am I thinking of, saran wrap, and he puts it on the cabinet of his kitchen. Well, then there's this montage of him going in and out in the elevator and the airport and different disguises. And it cuts back to him walking in the house and he's holding another bundle of money and it scans the entire house. And, and on every flat surface in the house, there are bundles of money. And he literally walks into the bathroom and lays this bundle of money on the back of the toilet because that was the last flat surface in his house that wasn't already covered in money. I'm telling you, that's what these guys are. They have so much money that they can't put it anywhere. So what they do is they give it to a bank and say, loan our money out and we want a return on this money. That's where the banks come in to assess a person's risk and decide if that person is credible enough to get a $100,000 mortgage or a loan, but it's really Jed Clampett's money who is the primary mortgage market, all right? And then what happens in a scenario like that when a person gets, oh, well, there's last, oh, no, here we are, primary mortgage market, commercial banks, hey, that's all fine and dandy. Let's get this off here. Bang. So what you've got are two documents that get written, the IOU and then the mortgage. All right? Can't read any of that. Let's try it again. You have the IOU or the note. That's the one document. And then there's a mortgage for the other document. Those are the two documents that the borrower will sign. The bank will then dole out money to that person. This money is Jed Clampett's money, okay? That is the primary mortgage market. So what happens is the bank now ends up with this IOU that says they're gonna pay $525 a month for 30 years, all right? The bank does not want this IOU. They want more than $525 Plus, they got to give Jed Clampett back his money. So what they end up doing is they sell it to the secondary market. All right. They sell it to the secondary market who then pays money for that cash flow. And the secondary bar market, a couple of the big ones are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae. All of these people are secondary buyers who then buy the note and they give back capital for that $100,000 and they may give back 105 and there's Clampett's 100 back plus some interest and the bank makes a little money. This is called financial services and it's nothing more than circular thinking where money goes from one person to the other and then capital comes back and then we reuse that capital to buy more or loan out more who sign more notes and then we sell those notes in pools and they call them pools, they group them together. 
and they can group them by all kinds of things. They can group them by credit score. They can group them by risk. They can group them by type, like is it a government loan or is it a conventional, which we'll talk about. So they would sell those in pools or trenches or tranches to secondary market buyers. Now, there's no rule in the world that says you, as you're listening to me, cannot be a secondary buyer. You got a couple million laying around you're not using, you can buy mortgages on the open market. They're called a mortgage-backed security, all right? You can do that if you have the money. Those are typically the biggest two uh, that we've got right there. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I think somewhere in the range of like 85 or 80 to 85 percent of all of them are bought by one of those two people. There are other people that buy it. If you've got the ability to do that and make some interest, that more power to you. All right. So that is the primary mortgage market and the secondary mortgage market. And that's where all of this financing starts. These are the people that put their hands in their pocket and pull out the actual money. Banks like Nat City, Fifth Third, Huntington, typically do not have money. It is their investors that have money. I think the Teachers Credit Union promised the Bank of Texas like $10 billion over the next 10 years because teachers are unionized, so they pay their union dues, and the teachers uh, union has all of this money, and they are promised it to this uh, bank so that they can get a return on that money that is union dues, all right? So hold on, we'll come back to the next one and talk a little bit more about the financing and how it happens, all right? See you in just a few minutes.